A few weeks ago I created a poll about date tables on LinkedIn. The question was about report creators using a full date table or a trimmed date table. And as you can see by the results here next to me, it wasn't an absolute win for one over the other, much closer to almost 50-50. But what does that mean in practice and why would or should you use one or the other date table? This is the topic of today's video, so prepare for some DEX fun. Let's get started. Hello, it's me Roland and this is Bilingual Analytics where I help you to learn more about Power BI. If this is your first time around here, then make sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with the latest and greatest Power BI tutorials. Hitting the like button wouldn't hurt either. Before we jump into this, I wanted to tell you that ahead of running this poll online, I also searched the internet for best practices about date table creation. But apart from the obvious, that you need one, I couldn't find any relevant guides. Also, just to limit today's topic a bit, I'm only going to focus on historical reporting. This means that I'm not going to address any calculations about forecast or anything that relates to future dates. So what is the difference between a full calendar table and a trimmed calendar table? Head over to Power BI Desktop and I show you. I have a super simple data set with only two columns, one for the date and another one for sales. We don't even need more details for this demo. I also created a full calendar table in DAX. The basis of this date table is a calendar auto function. By default, this function returns a full range of dates from the 1st of January of the minimum year of our data model until the 31st of December of the maximum year of our data model. Because I have sales between the 1st of January 2021 and the 14th of May 2022, it will create all the dates for 2021 and 2022. The trimmed calendar in this file is very similar to the full calendar, but, and there is a huge but, I use a calendar function to allow me to specify the start date and the end date. My start date is the first date in my sales data, and my end date is the last date in my sales data. Apart from this difference, both calendar tables have the same fields. Let's head over to the report canvas and confirm that all of this works fine. On the left side, you see my full calendar and on the right, my trimmed calendar. I used first date and last date code to confirm that my calendars are created the way I wanted them to be. And these card visuals just confirm that all is good. And even these tables on the bottom, sorted descending, confirm that for the full calendar, I have 31st of December as the last date while for the trimmed calendar, the last date is the 14th of May. Once these date tables were created, I added the relationship to both of them from my sales table, like this. The next logical step is to start writing measures using these calendar tables and see what sort of a difference, if any, will be there. Let's go back to Power BI. I'm going to start with the total sales measure in my sales table. Then, let's create a year-to-date sales calculation using both calendar tables. It should be fairly simple as I just need to grab the total sales measure and add a dates year-to-date filter with the right date field. Let me write these measures quickly. All measures, using the full calendar table which starts with the letter F and an underscore, while the trimmed versions are going to start with a letter T and an underscore. Alright, so when it comes to last year, year-to-date sales, I'm going to start from a trimmed calendar's year-to-date measure and add a same period last year filter. A quick note here. When my date in 2022 ends on the 14th of May, the same period last year function will pick up all dates between January and May 21. 
like what you see on the screen now when I copied just that DAX code. Meaning that in reality this calculation could be wrong as I'm comparing 5 full months data from 21 to 4 and a half ish month in 2022. Depending on how you want to define year to date, you can either live with this if your report only refreshes monthly, or if you want to create in a sense a daily year to date analysis, you are better off with date add function and define 365 days or by indexing dates and calculate based on those. But this is a bit more advanced topic and would require a dedicated video. So back to our date tables. We have last year year to date figures using the trimmed calendar. So try to copy paste the same decks, but switch the date to the full calendar. Well, it gives us a number, but this is not the right one. This roughly 1.4 million is the sales for full 2021. Let's quickly check the dates that are included in this same period last year filter. Well, when I use the same period last year filter on the full calendar table, it includes all dates from 2021. Take a mental note on this as we could easily use this calculation when it comes to our third measure, full year sales for previous year. But for last year year to date, we have to expand our filter arguments to ensure that we are comparing the same time period. It means that we need to use the YTD flag from the full calendar table and filter down the results to dates that we marked as year to date. Again, in this demo, I'm not too worried about day based year to date calculations. I'm happy to drive my year to date calculations at the month level. We are doing pretty good so far. Year to date sales measures were easy to create as both are using the same DAX and it doesn't matter which date table we use. Last year year to date was almost the same with the same period last year function, but for the full calendar table, we had to expand the filter argument with the year to date flag. Now let's write the full last year sales measure. The filter argument is going to be easy when we use the full calendar table as we just identified that it should be that same period last year. So this time I'm going to start from there. How can we get the same number for the trimmed calendar? It's not going to be that difficult either as we just need to define the date period for which we want Power BI to calculate the cells. And instead of hard coding this to 2021, I'm going to apply some smarts so the maintenance of this DAX code will be easier. This helps to ensure that next year, in 2023, I don't have to come back and update the dates from 2021 to 2022. Alright, so we have created the same three measures for both the full calendar table and the trimmed calendar table, and we managed to get the same results in card visuals. But how do last year year to date and year to date sales look when we add them to a column chart and what numbers are going to be visible? Let's find out. Wow, quite a big difference for the visuals when we put these measures into a column chart. One thing is for sure, from January till May, we have the same numbers, so that's great. But when it comes to the full calendar table from June till December, we have year-to-date sales. $504,000 listed without any last year year-to-date sales. On the right-hand side, under the trimmed calendar view, Year-to-date sales from June till December actually shows last year figures. If I hover over December, you will see the 1.3 million sales. There could be many different ways to fix these to ensure that the data viz is good, but my favorite solution is to apply a visual level filter using the YTD flag from the calendar table. Just like this. And now you can see that both visuals are showing the exact same result. So if both of these date tables can give you the exact same result, which one should you use? That's a really good question. My personal preference is a trimmed calendar table. The reason why I prefer that lies beneath the way how calendar auto behaves. It scans the whole data model and tries to find min and max date. 
so if you have any future expected shipping dates or pricing records with dates well into the future, then Calendar Auto is going to create a bloated date table. The only downside that I can think of for a trimmed calendar table is that it is based on a single date field. Let's say that I use invoice dates, but one of my measures should be based on the order date. Then I could potentially end up with dates falling outside of my date table. Let's say a product was ordered at the end of the year, but only invoiced in the new year. Then my date table won't cover all dates. Using that year-to-date visual level filter is also based on what is the expected result. If I'm running a comparison analysis, future months without sales results are not that important. It would be a completely different setup if I needed to report on sales trends. With that said, it's time for me to hand it over to you. Which date table is your preferred date table? Is it a full or a trimmed version? Let me know in the comments below along with any other questions that you have about this topic. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope that you learned something new and interesting from today's video and you will be able to implement this for your reports. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave or before you watch one from the above videos. Until the next one, see ya!